So Cowboys Eagles, probably game of the year to this point. Dak Prescott was amazing. I thought he outplayed Jalen Hurts. You talk about how the Eagles are situationally great. That wasn't the case on Sunday. As a matter of fact, they weren't situationally great. Back-to-back -back penalties on the final drive and inability to move the ball in the final drives offensively lead to Dallas having an opportunity to win the game late. What happened instead? Dallas basically said, hold my beer. I can be situationally worse than you've been today. We're going to take a penalty, a sack, and another penalty. Before you know it, our first and, goal, our first and five from the six is gonna become, I don't know, third and whatever the hell it was from like the 27, which was a disaster. C.D. Lamb runs as deep of a dig as you possibly can with the time that Dak Prescott was gonna to have to throw. It's short of the end zone. There's no one underneath to pitch it. C.D. Lamb obviously looked like he was trying to. There's no one underneath. There's no one there to pitch it. And the Eagles win the football game. The Eagles somehow turned their own disaster class or I'm sorry, the Cowboys somehow turned an Eagles disaster class into a Cowboys classic, which is, in fact, a disaster class. I don't know how they managed to do this time in and time out. They're so wildly undisciplined, and they have been since Jimmy Johnson was forced out in the 90s. At some point, is someone going to come in there that's going to be able to enforce discipline and stability? No! How about a big no? Because right now it's instability and chaos and they're losing the games they have to win. The games they should win. The games they had opportunities left and right to win. The Cowboys had them. And when the Cowboys walk away from this game, they're going to go, damn it, man. We were right there. Missed it by that much. Not only that, but we would have been, what, a game back in the division? If they had won that game, half a game back in the division, had they won that game, something like that. And they fall short. And now it looks like the Eagles will run away with the division. The Eagles still have a gauntlet ahead of them. But Cowboys let one slip big time. They had to win that game. They were right there. Stopped on the inch line on fourth and goal. Dak Prescott steps out of bounds and a two-point conversion. Really, the only major mistake Dak made, everyone's going to talk about, oh, you can't take the sack there. You can't take the sack there. Let me let me just real quick rewatch this play. Let me just rewatch this play to make sure I'm not crazy. Uh, NFL. I said NFL replays. <laughs> yes, I have, I have NFL Plus. Two hours later. Let's see if there's anywhere from the go. All right, so first of all, he had a guy open for a touchdown, and it looks like he was looking right at him. So we're, we're checking out the All-22 here real quick. This will, of course, get edited. How's he reading this? Okay, so this looks like... What are they, so pre-snap, I might pick it back up right here and see if I can just play. I'm just going to get this... Uh, <clears throat> We're, we're doing some analysis. We're just jumping right into the analysis. All right, so we got... A few moments later. So I just cut a ton of me talking, like 10 minutes. And I want you guys to understand that what I was doing was rambling on and on and on about the crucial mistake Dak Prescott made by taking a sack late in the game. I have been defending Dak Prescott by saying, hey, well, where is he supposed to go with the football? I mean, if no one's open, then he can't throw. Well, there's a couple problems with that. One... Someone was open. Two, he should have identified it based on the coverage that he should have been able to identify at the snap. Bang, bang. It should have been quick, identify, throw. Three, even if the one is open, chuck the ball out of the back of the end zone as soon as that timer goes off in here. You can't start, it's not scramble drill. There's not that much time left, especially with the way your right tackle has been getting bold lead all game long. Let's jump in. I'm going to show you what I mean. All right, so here, let me, let me pause it real quick. So, Empty set, two receivers left, three receivers right, right? We got a linebacker over the tight end. We got Darius Slade pressed up on CD Lamb, playing hard outside leverage, and then another quarter playing with some cushion on the outside receiver. I believe that's Brandon Cooks. You've got your second safety. I'm not sure if it's Kevin Byer or not. 
but he's outside the hash playing inside leverage on CeeDee Lamb at about nine yards cushion. It's pretty clear he's bracketing, especially when you see Darius Slay start to communicate with that safety. Basically saying, hey, you got inside. Darius Slay plays hard outside. He plays hard inside. That's called bracketing. They're double teaming CeeDee Lamb. Makes sense. Now you just got to read the one high safety on the left hash standing at the goal line. All right. If he hauls ass left, you know it's cover two. Your decision making process changes. If he sits, it is cover one or it is cover three. And based off of the alignment, you could guess man coverage. James Bradbury locked up on the outside. Everyone is locked up in man, very clearly. Eyes on their guy. With the exception of the guy in the bottom, he's looking inside. That's going to change very quickly. Play the. Now let's run the play. Right, he scoots up. Everything's man. Bang. Ball gets snapped. All right, clearly man coverage. Clearly a bracket. What did Dak do? He did a great job first. He looks at the safety. Safety sits. Okay, we know it's man coverage. We've identified that. We've identified it single high. Now we know it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. What can beat it? Oh, look to your corner out. And by the way, it's a phenomenal route. I believe that's by Kevontae Turpin, but he gets wide open. And what does Dak do? He decides to go into scramble mode. He's wide open. It's a touchdown. Get that ball to the pylon. you got to throw that ball with rhythm and timing and anticipation. He does none of those things. Now let's watch it from the end zone view. We're going to look at this and we're going to see, look, look at his eyes. He reads this right. Top of the drop, bang. Doesn't throw it. He's open. He looks at the corner and doesn't throw it. I, oh my God, it's painful. That's with 16 seconds to go. And then, and then, and then to make things worse, what do they do? Let's spike it, right? We're going to run up and spike it. No, we're going to run a play. I mean, what? What? Huh? And on top of that, we're going to throw it to the wrong guy anyway. Guys, back to back plays, horrific execution. And I've just ripped into Dak Prescott because that was an horrible series of mistakes he did play an excellent game all right but this is why when we talk about Dak Prescott and we say he's not a silver winning quarterback we say he's not an elite quarterback big time plays in big time moments he's got a guy open he identified the coverage he literally he took the proper steps with the proper rhythm he got to the corner route at the proper time. You can see him looking to the left. He made the right decision to take the 2 on 2 option to the left. And he didn't pull the trigger. The corner is facing inside. He's looking this way, and the receiver's running that way. That's called a touchdown, guys. It's called a touchdown, touchdown. Cowboys win 30 or 31 or 29 if they go for two and don't get it. To 28. That simple. Didn't make the play. So we talk about when we talk about Dak Prescott. And I like Dak. He's a great leader. He seems like a great dude. There's a ceiling on the level of success you can have with a physically gifted quarterback that just doesn't process information. And that's why, by the way, I love Kirk Cousins as much as I do. He processes information very quickly, and he makes crucial plays in crucial moments. He didn't get it done in the playoff game against the Giants. That's understandable. Dak Prescott had a clean pocket for long enough to deliver the throw. That's something Kirk Cousins can say very rarely. That's something many quarterbacks can say very rarely. But the reality is they dialed up the play. That worked against the defense. They had a route to beat it. They had a route against too high with Ferguson running that seam up the middle. It wasn't too high. It was one high with a bracket. Dak identifies it, goes left, and he just doesn't pull the trigger. The Cowboys watched film of this game today. And in that quarterback room, that's exactly what the coach said to him. I promise you. It's disappointing, but that's just the reality of the situation. I think we got it all covered. 
So I appreciate all of you for watching. I really do. And if you enjoyed this content, if you want to see me break down final plays of games, like I just did there, recommend it. This is going to be a shorter version of this. It's going to be in a TikTok because I yapped for a minute there. But I appreciate all of you for taking the time out of your day to click on this video. If you enjoyed it, if you want to see more of it, leave a like. Subscribe and hit that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I post more videos here on YouTube. And if you would like to follow me on my other social media platforms, feel free to go over to Instagram and TikTok at The Pocket Passer. Thank you all so much for watching. I can't overstate my appreciation for those of you that have come on and subscribed. We're up to 56 subscribers. Boop, 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 boop. Or is it 57 now? Um, hopefully we can keep this thing rolling. I've got like a little over 200 followers on Instagram and a little over 100 on TikTok. So I want to grow this as fast as I possibly can. And I'm trying my best to make better and better content. Any suggestions you guys have, I would beyond appreciate it for you guys to drop those in the comment section. Thank you all again so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next video.